For some reason, the Subiaco Post really doesn't seem to like clean, green, environmentally friendly bike infrastructure. And they're still running stories and letters about the Eric Street bike path in Cottesloe. And this week they ran yet another letter from a resident in Eric Street, this time suggesting don't build it in Eric Street, build it across in another street that's parallel, which is Grant Street. Grant Street Island Reserve is a generous shared corridor all the way to Stirling Highway, uh, linking with the Curtin Avenue crossing lights and existing railway crossing and needing only pedestrian lights at Stirling Highway, blah, blah, blah. It will be a far safer route for a shared path on Eric Street for a fraction of the costs. That's from Lee Roberts of Eric Street. Well, I wonder if Lee's actually gone and had a close look at Grant Street. I'm not so sure. Anyway, a few weeks ago, they ran another letter, which included a photograph like this, which, you know, said we should be using this reserve because look at how wide it is. It's absolutely wonderful. Unfortunately, I didn't save that one. But, you know, you get the drift. They're, they're trying to push the path off to Grant Street, even though the money's been allocated and the work's about to start. Right, so we get off the principal shared path at Grant Street. Yes, there's existing traffic lights, which is really good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ride up Grant Street on the road all the way to the beach. Then I'm going to ride along the beach a little bit, turn around, come back and ride in the reserve in the middle where they're suggesting the, the path should go. So as you can see, there's a, well, would you call this a pseudo bike lane uh, down the side of the road already, constructed with the, our favourite magic white paint. Okay, it's, it's a reasonable width. Looks like it hasn't been swept for some time. I can't see any symbology in it anywhere which says uh, it's for bicycles only or anything that says no parking because at a couple of places along here there are cars generously parked right across uh, that lane. So uh, yeah, a you know, small problem there. But would uh, Grant Street, would that reserve where all those parked cars are function well as a, uh, a place to put a shared path? Uh, well, you decide, because as we come through this roundabout and we go past Daisy's Cafe, which I've done a video on, I've visited that and uh, tried out that coffee and stuff. As we go up the hill here, look at all the parking over there on the reserve. In fact, they've paved that section. That's the only part I didn't ride up, because obviously driving and parking along here is very popular, either because people want to go to Daisy's Deli back there, or they want to park here and, and walk to the beach because, you know, it's a super popular beach and parking is at an absolute premium here. I guess that's why people are parked in the bike lane. Funny looking bicycles, I guess. And as we go further up the hill, yet more parked cars. And you can see that they park here so often, all the grass has just been completely killed off. It's just a sandy wasteland over there. And I guess the Porsche owners don't want to park on the, uh, I'll use grass in inverted commas, because they might get bogged in the sand. <laughs> That'd be a little bit embarrassing. Uh, but look, it's just cars, 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 cars. So the first issue of running a shared path through there is how those people are going to react, uh, Lee, when you remove all that parking. Uh, had you considered that? Because, you know, this is Saturday. It's only 22 degrees today. Beautiful day. But, uh, you know, what's it like in the peak of summer when it's 38 degrees? and people are absolutely flocking down the beach for a swim or, or to cool off or whatever, or visiting friends here that are working air conditioners, I don't know. But I'm assuming that is probably just wall-to-wall -wall cars uh, when that happens. And what do you do then? Uh, similarly, as we go down here, you can see there's some bare patches where I guess uh, you know vehicles get parked quite a lot, and uh, there's just no grass. But otherwise, um, What's it like riding along here? Well, it was it was actually pretty cruisy, I found. Uh, wasn't hassled uh, by cars whatsoever. Uh, that is a reasonably steep hill, possibly steeper than Eric Street, but, you know, what the heck, wasn't that bad. So we get to a roundabout at the bottom here, and to get to anything useful from here, the, the, the cafes, the shops, uh, the beach that's not a dog beach, the pub, any of that kind of thing, you either have to ride down the footpath, which isn't super wide, and it wasn't very busy today with pedestrians, but I could see how, again, this could be absolute screaming chaos when the weather's hot, or you ride on the road. And uh, so I rode back on the road, and I know a lot of cyclists have had very close passes along here, 
and uh, it can be quite unpleasant when there's you know quite a bit of uh, vehicle traffic going back and forth. So, uh, without putting in a solution along Marine Parade there, it's a bit silly to put in a path down Grant Street because it just kind of dumps you nowhere. So it's, it's a path to nowhere. Now let's go back up the uh, the centre, but before we do that, let's just stop here and have a look off to our right. And what do we find? There's no cars parked in this area to our right because it's some kind of dirty grey big sump drain or you know drainage system for this area. So I guess you could run uh, a, a bridge across it because you'd have to retain that as, as drainage, otherwise the area is going to flood uh, in heavy rains. So I guess Lee hadn't actually walked or ridden down here and had a close look. They'd probably just driven by and gone, oh, you know, Grant Street. Now, nice wide thing isn't it oh yeah we'll put the uh, shared path over there won't we because then we can park cars over here on this side of it yeah that'll be fine won't it uh no there's one small problem and that's tree roots so you actually need to put the path over here closer to the road where the tree roots are not going to undermine it and that means no parking over there ever again because you can't have drivers crossing the shared path Second problem is there is a whole bunch of these uh, little cut through things here, which allow you uh, to you know, go from um, one street across to the next. Uh, and uh, you know, if we look at the map, we can see you know, there's a whole bunch of them. I'd close all of them. I'd close all seven of those crossovers. And if people wanted to uh, you know, go from left to right, those three roundabouts, you just drive up to the roundabout, go around the roundabout, come back because the residents here are super concerned about cyclist safety. They've made that absolutely crystal clear in the paper. And so as a safety measure, I'd be closing those uh, cross streets and forcing drivers to, you know, take another 20 seconds or so and uh, go to the roundabout, turn around and come back. And I guess Lee hadn't thought about that either. I mean, you know, Lee's probably one of those concerned residents who, you know, safety is their first priority. Yep, my first priority too, close those cross streets. Now, what do we do when we get to the roundabouts and we're in the middle of this uh, reserve? How, how do you then get across a roundabout when you're in the middle of the road? Uh, yeah, that's a little bit tricky. Not quite sure how that one gets engineered. That to me is an absolutely fatal flaw in using this as a reservation, apart from the tree roots and the car parking and uh, you know the cross streets where there's a danger of uh, you know getting hit by drivers using those as they zip across. So yeah, um, on paper looks like a great idea. You know if you're driving past in your car and you don't bother to actually come out and uh, walk it or ride it and, and have a look, do a, a pertinent audit, as Ostroads uh, would say. Um, I could see how you could very easily completely overlook uh, those issues. You know, you don't want to have the path here right next to the trees where the tree roads are going to undermine it. Because again, if you, uh, you know, the, the Post ran a, a letter some weeks ago about Russell Street with a resident of that street complaining that the path was crumbling. And I use that in inverted commas. Uh, and it's not actually crumbling. What's happening is there's some tree roots undermining it and forcing uh, the path up in places, which you know happens everywhere. So we can't do that because again, the residents down there on Russell Street are very, very concerned about uh, damage to the path. Oh, here's Daisy's by the way. This place was, oh God, I couldn't believe how many people were here. Absolutely going off. Uh, and it, you know, it looks like a great place to sit out there. And I can see why there's probably so many cars parked in the area. Now you might've noticed as I came past there, there was a dirty great big high voltage uh, cabinet there. You just see that little green or big green thing there. Um, and there's actually a couple of them in the road reserve. There's one there and there's one right down the end here. So don't know what you do with them. I guess you have to move them. That's probably very expensive. So I know Lee said oh, you could do it very cheaply. I don't think so. And look, here's another one of these drainage sump things uh, for this area. You can see there's drains in the bottom there. So you'd probably have to bridge that again. And, uh, you know, bridging starts to get expensive. And obviously I couldn't ride down there, so I hopped across here onto the, the path to just bypass this section. You can see, 
you know, that'd be a reasonable length of bridging you'd have to run across there, as well as another roundabout you've got to deal with. Uh, but let's just go back and see how deep this thing is, just uh, just for fun. And I rode into it, and I guess it's, what, a metre, metre and a half deep at its deepest. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's not super deep, but you can't fill it in. You know, this thing is, it's here as a piece of civil engineering to make sure, uh, you know, the people around here don't have water running into their lounge rooms the next time it, it rains really heavily. And look, there's a great big, uh, you know, culvert there. Make sure the water runs into there and uh, not into someone's house. So look, let's keep on heading up towards the railway line. You can see, uh, you know, there's a couple of trees here which would have to be removed because you wouldn't want to snake in and out of the trees again because of the tree root problem. You're just better off going pretty much through where those trees are there and just, you know, wood chipping the trees. Um, you know, sad but true. So all of this section would have to be uh, blocked from parking, essentially. You just, you just lost it. So, um, you know, I guess some people would think that's no great loss. Others would think it would be the end of the world. Uh, again, a cross street like this one, I would get rid of it uh, for safety reasons because there's just too much risk of getting uh, clobbered by a driver uh, coming across there. So another tree that's probably got to get removed. Um, maybe another tree that's got to be removed. And, you know, interestingly, there's not a huge amount of parking on this side of the road. Or everyone seems to want to park on the other side. Anyway, another tree that wants to be removed. Another crossover that we've uh, got to get rid of. And what have we got here? Yeah, it's a bit bushy and it's actually looks like it's fenced off. Didn't, is that another um, uh, drainage area? Possibly, I don't know. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit tight. Anyway, let's just roll down the hill here. Uh, it's not that far to the railway line. And what do we find at the bottom of the hill? Uh, well, with over on the right there, you can see some cabinets are now just behind that parked uh, four-wheel drive. And look, oh, it's another drainage sumpy thing. Uh, I didn't ride into this one, but clearly you can see some drains there. So must be a stormwater system going under there, I guess. So, yeah, it's, it doesn't, you know, on, oh, there's the there's the electrical cabinets. And, and presumably they have to be moved uh, in order to... Um, well, may have to be moved. But it also means there might be services running under here apart from stormwater that you've got to worry about. Um, you know, electrical, gas, water, that kind of stuff. You never know what might be buried. So you have to go and find out what's uh, what's there. Um, so yeah, Grant Street. Oh, look, I can see why it looks like such an attractive proposition. You look at how wide this thing is. And I'd say, yeah, one day this would be great to run a path along here because you know there's a, there's a lot of land, obviously. Uh, I guess it was reserved originally for so this could be a, a two-lane street in both directions, but you know that's never going to happen. Um, but turning, uh, putting a shared path on one side or the other of these trees is going to mean getting rid of a lot of parking um, and you know dealing with. Um, uh, drainage issues. Now here I just wanted to show you surface roots from this tree. You can, I'm pointing badly at a couple of them. And this is why you need to avoid going uh, anywhere near the trees. And uh, prefer <laughs> preferably, uh, you know, wood chipping the trees that are anywhere near the path's route so you don't have those tree roots growing up in the future and destroying the path because, you know, that would be a waste of money. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, we looked at the parking, we looked at the drainage, and uh, obviously there's the, the danger of these crossovers. So I think, you know, closing those would be quite uh, a good idea. And the issue of what the hell do you do with these roundabouts? You know, you've got three roundabouts to deal with. How do you get through them when you're in the, in the reservation? Uh, that's, like I said, that's a very interesting piece of uh, traffic management that I don't think has been considered. So I think that's why Grant Street has been left as a secondary route, probably with uh, you know, a painted line there rather than uh, a shared path. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Uh, we'll see if anyone else writes the paper suggesting that Grant Street should be the street.